What is more relaxing than a woodland cabin in the middle of the rainforest? The answer is nothing. So today I'm going to be building a woodland cabin in Bloxburg. And I've even got the weather to match because apparently I'm God now. Let there be light. Also guys, please appreciate my explorer outfit for this video. I've even got an adventurer's backpack. As you can see behind me, we have the rough shell of the cabin. All that's left is to name it. My woodland cabin of dreams. Perfect. Let's get started. So you might be wondering, Reese, what are these random lines everywhere? Um, I don't actually know. I think I was trying to find the center or something. So since the wall's already in, windows are next. But rather than going into windows and just adding a bunch of normal ones, that ain't gonna cut it for this bit up here. We're actually gonna have to go in and custom make them. So <laughs> this isn't gonna be hard at all. And actually, why am I doing squares? Did I fail geometry? That is a triangle, Reese. I'm I'm really bad at custom building. If you couldn't guess already. The glass is in at least. Now it's time to actually make it look a little bit more detailed by using a little something called standard square beam. And please know, I really thought I was doing something here. And then I saw it. <laughs> What is this, mate? Gosh, this looks like somebody's just chucked a bunch of the, the rainforest logs on here. However, I think I managed to fix it. And what wood textures do we have? <gasps> it's gotta be these, hasn't it? These are superior. And I'm gonna make these little like top ones, just a lighter shade of linen. <gasps> oh my gosh, I forgot I had to do the window on the back, okay. Oh my gosh, I forgot I had to do the window on the back. Okay. Through the power of editing, that was done rather quickly. And the last thing we need to select is the actual colour of the roof. So if you look at pictures of Woodland Mansion, the roofs are actually often brick. Which, not gonna lie, this looks sick. Now we need the actual windows in, and we've been going for a modern look, so we may as well continue this. <gasps> Lord have mercy! This looks so cool. Anyway, before I get too excited, let's add the rest of the windows. Because these ones are nice, but the only thing is they don't go up to the roof. Although, I don't think that looks too bad. Okay, that is about it for the windows. What doors? Definitely got to be double doors. This is fancy already. We could have these, but is that too much glass? I personally think it might be a bit too much glass. All right, that looks great. We just need to decide what pillar to use. The regular pillar, the massive pillar, or the square pillar. I'm personally feeling the square pillar. We only need a couple anyway. Look at me with my little backpack looking out onto my new home. The last thing is gotta be a chimney because a house like this is gonna have a fireplace in it. However, anybody who knows anything about building knows it's all about the terrain. And I actually got this idea from my friend Alaska Violet. You can terraform using roofs. So I don't really know how to do it. I think you just like dabble them around. Oh my gosh. Wait, why is this so fun though? You'll notice I'm making it go real far back because I want us to have a massive garden. Oh, that kind of looks realistic, you know? Guys, this is my amazing terraforming, okay? And now is the expensive part, trees. I mean, look at the price of some of these things, $900. Since this is a rainforest, we probably need to use a variety of different trees. And then I think we just get to dot all of these different trees around. Guys, look at my money, look at it. Now you see it, now you don't. And as you can see, I've only had about a third of the trees and it's already cost me like 50 grand but I see why people terraform now it's like a whole different game and just to stop these like little stubby roots showing I'm going to get a fence oh no I was gonna put a fence but I've just realized like you can't put fences on roofs no matter, no matter. Instead, we can just use these rocks. I mean, some of these rocks are defying the law of gravity a bit. They should really be smashing down into our lovely woodland home to be. But that's the best part about Bloxburg is gravity does not apply. Okay, all the rocks are in. It kind of looks like a massive line of poo. Now we can just finish off adding the trees. And I've got to admit, this is like the most satisfying thing I've ever done. Comment down below if you want me to do terraforming more often because it's well fun. Who? thousand dollars guys my money i did not realize how much these were but luckily all the trees are in now it only cost me about 200k and i'm sorry but while we're outside we might as well just do a bit of the garden it's all going to be decking because why would we have anything other than wood when it's a woodland mansion and the other day i actually discovered kind of a hidden item in blocksburg if you search up pool as you can see it looks like there's just like seven but if you click the aquatech one Look at this. There is a whole decked out pool. I mean, is this or is this not perfect? 
And I wonder, can you put cool items in here? Surely you can. <gasps> we can have a little ducky in here. And I've never understood why the evil duck is $13,000. What is so special about the duck, please? And eventually we're going to have a barbecue, a sitting area. But for now, I do fancy going inside. So let me sketch the layout. Okie dokie. So this might be the most interesting layout of a house ever. As you first walk in, it's going to be a very open plan living room with like corner sofas, a fireplace. To the left is going to be the kitchen and to the right is going to be the dining room. And then as you go upstairs, we have a couple more rooms. It's going to be a hallway along here. Then there's going to be a bedroom on the left, a smaller bedroom on the right. And this back here is the bathroom. And just to show you, I'll put walls down. There's going to be like a door from this bedroom and a door from this bedroom. So you're going to be able to access the bathroom from both sides. But before we worry about upstairs, we might as well do the entrance. And remember, I said it's going to be all open plan. There's literally going to be like two walls either side. That's it. And apparently this wall over here is invisible. Bloxburg loves lagging. And inside of this cabin, I'm actually going to use these pillars. Whoa, look at that. That is so cool. No, we're not going to have it that big, but like this big. So first things first, technically this room needs lighting and we're obviously having a chandelier. Look, since the roof is so high, actually going to have to have it on the third floor. And I've made the chandelier black, not because we're gothic vampires, Empires, but just because I think that goes best. A room of this caliber definitely needs a large carpet or two. And let's look up what is a woodland color. The color woodland belongs to the color family dark yellow. Okay, so this is dark yellow. Actually, I was about to shade them. Why does that look so good? This is why you should always look up your complementary colors, guys. And my inspo for this is going to be like the Kardashian summer house. That is how big and expensive I want this to be. And we all know the only coffee table big enough to fit in here is going to be the modern one. And I really haven't built in this style ever before. I feel like a lumberjack would live here. I know that's the most weirdest thing, but I do. And I was about to use these lamps, but do you know what lamps I never use? The log lamp. Uh, hello, we're literally living in a giant tree right now. This is our only chance to use these lamps and it actually makes sense. And this might not be my brightest idea, but I'm gonna add some candles. Having candles in a house made only of wood is definitely not the brightest idea, but they are aesthetic. So let's just pretend they're the fake ones, okay? Next of all, we're gonna have many, many bookcases. And I wonder if we look up wood, will there be anything? There's loads of stuff. We can have a wooden alpaca and we can pretend that grandpa carved this from one of the trees outside. There's wooden wind chimes. Oh my gosh, I'm putting them outside to remind me to do that later. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. That is the bookcases done. I think plants are gonna be quite a lifesaver because as you can see, this is a very, very massive space. So plants are a really good way to fill them up. And the back doors in a house like this are gonna be just as important as the front door because obviously you're gonna go out there exploring and stuff. And that's why you can see me adding all of these like hat stands. And with a round table and a couple of these old rustic style dresses, you can tell grandma definitely picked these. And you might be wondering, what is this book here, Reese's? That is going to be a guest book. So everybody who visits can sign their name as a memory. That is basically this whole foyer room done. So next is the kitchen. And as per usual, is nothing's changing here. We're still gonna have a humongous cabinet unit. But you know what? For once, I'm not gonna use this fridge. I'm actually gonna use the Arctic fridge. Even though Arctic is the opposite of where we are right now, though I'm still gonna be getting the holy grail of ovens, the Pro Chef Extra Large oven. There we go. Doesn't this look so cool open plan that like you can just trot in and you can go straight to the kitchen? As if there wasn't enough places to sit, we're actually gonna add an island bench. What stools are woodish? I feel like we should just add the log ones. Like, they're a bit bit of a basic choice, but sometimes basic is right. And to make your stools look more realistic, actually just turn a couple to like a small little right angle and it will look just a tad bit more real. Let's see what treats my inventory has to offer, shall we? <gasps> Three coffee machines. Okay, we'll put a couple in here. We'll save one for the outdoor barbecue area. Slush machines. God, we've got the works in here, haven't we? I feel like I want us to have a set of blue appliances. In your house, are all of your things like kettle, toaster, all the same? But in this house, I want 
them to all be blue and white. But I think that is good for the actual kitchen itself. We don't want to clutter it. And like I said, we can just have a breakfast table over here. So how I'm going to do it is I'm going to get a circle table like this. And I'm going to put four all squished up together. To stop that awful glitching, we'll just use a cylinder. And guys, it's actually quite late when I'm filming this. It's almost 9 p.m. I've got to turn the brightness down a little bit. It's burning my eyes. Anywho, let me continue explaining my plan. We're then going to get armchairs and place these all around. And as you can see, it creates this absolutely awesome breakfast table. Doesn't that look so cool and like autumnal? And you know what? We've gotten this far without having a mirror. How on earth are we meant to take mirror selfies if we haven't even added a mirror? And we should probably add some sort of like fancy chandelier over this table or something. And it's still looking a tad bit dark in here. So a little life hack, which I always say, is just to put lights in the basement. And ta-da, light problem is solved. And just before we head over to the dining table, I haven't added any structural beams yet. And we're gonna have to actually be very, very creative with these. But look how amazing that looks. Last room downstairs is the dining table. Uh, not the dining table, the dining room, sorry. And this is gonna be the dining table to absolutely annihilate all dining tables. It's gonna be not one, not two, but three dining tables long. And it's not even about just how long it is. It's about how we decorate it. And the centerpiece, you guys are not even ready for this. It is going to be not only a vase, but the vase is going to be held up by alpacas. Oh. And earlier, I was doing all this talk about adding a fireplace. And I had literally forgot to add one. And to be fair, yeah, we don't need to be scared of fire like I thought earlier with the candles. Because in the films, whenever they have a wooden cabin, they always have a fireplace. So surely it can't be that dangerous now, can it? And I love how when I was planning this, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be such a small, simple build. And then as usual, it turns out to be so massive. But that is now the dining room done as well. And I love this. My vision really came to life here. The last two things we have to do is the upstairs and the back garden. So we kind of started this and then just left it. I think the only other thing I want out here is that barbecue area I promised earlier. If I can build a floor and then we'll actually outline this so that no bugs can crawl on to the floor. And while we're at the front, we might as well add like a couple of bits and bobs. And I couldn't resist adding this little hut and some plants. The plants kind of look bad, but it's just meant to like resemble some more terraforming. But we got a bit distracted there. Let's go back to do the barbecue area, which I promised all of y'all. So we'll have another little outdoor island. Don't know why these rogue plates are there. And we can probably use the same counters from inside, actually. Although it's going to cost me a fortune to copy and paste this. And do you guys not call it a BBQ in America? We call it a BBQ in England. But there we go. We've got our pro chef stove. And whenever a barbecue is going on, there's always like stacked up plates and bowls ready for like the hot dog and the buns. And we should also probably add a couple of lanterns before we go to the upstairs, which is actually the final part. However, I only have $693. So I am back with six. 60,000 more. So let's get this outline drawn. And I have just realized like the roof is so high, like the walls don't really work. But I was thinking over this part here, we could add just like a flat roof. And just to fix this space, we could actually just put maybe another window here. That was actually quite a good idea. That's filled the space up really nicely while still keeping the open plan look. And this is the first door we're actually choosing for the interior. And remember guys, this is going to be a joint bathroom. So it'll have two doors going into it. So my dream, if I ever was rich enough to have an estate like this, I would want a standing bath. Over here, I think should be the shower. I never really do separate showers, but this seems like the perfect place and time. Then of course we also need a sink, so I'll use these rustic counters, and we need some mirrors. Oh, wait, in, in America, don't you call them mirror? <laughs> you say it like all quick, you're like a mirror. And I love how this house is designed for like a billion people, yet there's like two bedrooms. But don't worry, I'm gonna make enough bed space for five people. And you might be wondering, Reese's, how are you going to do that? Well, since the bathroom is done, let me show you. So this room here is going to be the parents' bedroom, and then in this this room is going to be for like all the grandkids. So it's going to be like when you go camping, it's just a bunch of bunk beds all put together. And since this is a holiday home, the bedrooms can be very, very sparse with what's in them. And something else that might be quite vibey to put in here is some spherical string lights. 
The desks in these rooms are going to be slightly more advanced in the fact that they're going to have humongous computers on them. And this is actually really making me want to go on like a woodland holiday, isn't it you? But in all of my happiness, we have now completed the woodland cabin. So Explorer Reese's is ready to take the tour. So lots of you guys have been asking to see the values of my build. This came to 489,000. So very, very expensive. But I'd say it's worth it. We basically got a whole mansion out of this, plus an entire estate of terrain. But let's go through the main doors. Ah! This is actually massive. It looks a bit full on and like different, but I love that. So I went for these like Greek looking tilings on the walls as you walk in. And then of course we have this lounge room. So this is where you'd sit for like family game night. If you wanted a snack, you could go over to the kitchen where dad would be preparing some home cooked pizzas. Then on the other side, we have the dining table. This is for more formal meals. Like if we had a big roast turkey, for example, if you went to like catch dinner, like catch a big turkey out on the range. But yeah, overall, this whole area is absolutely stunning to me. And it actually leads into our glorious back garden. So we have a pool, which is probably for the younger ones. You can like splish splash around in this. And if you get onto the floaty, it's actually quite fun. Like you can proper swing around in here. And then the last thing in the back garden is the little barbecue area. Just a cute outdoor bit. But by far the best thing is definitely like the surroundings. I think it looks insane. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, first mistake spotted. And that mistake is actually where we're heading upstairs. So the first room is like the kids room. This is where you would sleep. And that's why it's not really fancy because all you're doing here is sleeping. The other bedroom is granny and grandpa's room. Very boring, but this leads to the bathroom, which is a little bit dark for now, but you guys get the gist. And my favorite thing is the bath because one, look how cool this bath is. And two, look at the views. So I do hope all of you guys enjoyed watching me create this build. It was just something a little bit different. Please do subscribe to the channel if you liked it. It really helps it out. Thanks to everybody who watched this and I'll see you all next time.